This is Wald Amberson from the Tarot School, and you're listening to 7 Minutes with Mary Greer. Welcome, Mary. Hi, Wald. Really nice to be talking with you. We're actually very, very excited, very pleased and happy that you'll be teaching at the Reader Studio in 2014. So we want to thank you for talking with us today. And I have a question for you, Mary. You're very well known for your interest in and your development of the psychological aspects of tarot, which is a big thing these days, a very important aspect of current awareness and current technique and current progress in tarot. How has that combination of tarot and psychology over a long period of time affected your own personal and professional evolution? Oh, that's a big one. There's really not much separation for me between the two in that I first became interested in tarot when I was in college and totally intrigued by what was being called in my English department archetypal symbolism. That was an introduction for me to Jung, and around the same time, I became interested in Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey, which was fairly recently out, which covered the same kind of idea, the, a path of development psychically for people, and that we could see that through symbols. So when I first saw a tarot deck, I said, this is it. This is what shows those kinds of symbols that kind of describe our life especially the inner life, but also can reflect the outer life. So it really was kind of the same thing at the same time, just finding a very specific outlet for all of the principles that I had been looking at in archetypal psychology based on the work of Carl Jung and Joseph Campbell's idea of mythology and symbolism. You know, I don't think you can really have symbolism that's not speaking directly to and about the psyche. So on that level, they really aren't any different. But when it comes to actually reading the cards for other people, I have to be careful. I worked on a PhD in psychology and quit it because I was just too busy doing my tarot practice and tarot books and other things. And I realized I didn't want to be constrained by the requirements of jobs and professions in the field of psychology. So it was really important to me to find a way to work with the tarot in what you could broadly call a therapeutic manner, but that didn't cross over into psychological counseling. Because for one thing, I live in a state where that's very strictly regulated And as a professional in one field, I need to be respectful of the parameters of profession in another area. So I work with people only once or twice a year so that we don't have that ongoing session. But what we do is we really look at projection. For me, the psyche, a person's inner life and their inner truth is being projected onto the cards. Now, there's other things that are going on there. If if this was a discussion on magic, I would get into all of those aspects that I find very important. But from the point of view of psychology, I think you can make a case for tarot being primarily a projection device, whether it's the reader who's projecting their own insights and pattern-making ability onto the cards or, in my preferred way, guiding somebody through their own process with the cards that involves a lot of projection. We're dealing either way with the inner subjectivity that is part of our whole human condition. Although we have subjective universes, each of us individually, we work as human beings in a community where we have a lot of agreement about what these subjective experiences mean. Did this work change you in any way? Did it make any difference to who you are and how you manage your universe? That's hard to say because Tarot's been my constant companion for 48 years. (laughs) And more than any other single thing, it has been with me. So I can't separate who I am at this stage in my life from my work with Tarot. 
they're so completely intertwined. So yes, it's probably made me a whole different person than I would have been otherwise. Well, you know, it's really funny to hear you say all that because there are a number of people in the tarot world who are defined by their use of tarot. That is, they are tarot readers. That's who they are. That's what they do. That's their universe, and that's their identity. And you're one of those people, I think, or at least somebody that other people would identify with in that way. Well, you know, Mary, I want to thank you very, very much for being here and for saying those things and clarifying that particular issue. We're really, really looking forward to your presentation at the Reader Studio. And again, I want to thank you very much for being here. And I hope that you're looking forward to it as much as we are. Oh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. I've been going to, I think, all but one of the Reader Studios, and they're incredible. I'm delighted that you still think so. It's amazing. Well, that by itself is an endorsement that you can hardly beat. The fact that after all this time and all those adventures with the Reader Studio, you still find it so pleasant. Oh, definitely. It's one of the highlights of my year. Well, lovely. Thank you, Mary. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And be sure to visit ReaderStudio.com. Learn more about the event there. That's Readers with an S. You have to put an S at the end of Readers and make it ReaderStudio.com. And, of course, we'll see you in April. So thanks, everybody. Talk to you soon.